And now welcome back. Human rights activists have again called for apartheid-era politicians and government officials to account for their involvement in the killing of anti-apartheid activists. Now the call was revisited by the Imam Harun Foundation uh, during this week's annual lecture that was held in memory of Imam Harun. Now the lecture was to commemorate the anniversary of the Imam's killing in police detention in 1969 by the apartheid police. Meanwhile, the NPA and the Hawks have committed to dedicate units that will prosecute apartheid crimes and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission cases. And joining us now are the Imam Harun Foundation coordinator, Kasim Khan, and Lukanyo Galata, author and the son of Fort Galata, one of uh, apartheid anti, uh, 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 one of the four anti-apartheid activists known as the Craddock Four, who were murdered by the apartheid regime in 1985. Uh, Kasim and Lukanyo Kanyo, thanks so much for speaking to us. Uh, welcome to Morning Live. Hi, Thank you morning. so much. Uh... So, um, Lukanyo, if I could start with you. Uh, you know, uh, we were told, of course, that uh, the, TRS, uh, the, the, the NPA have now committed that uh, they have set up a dedicated team uh, to actually look into uh, matters of apartheid crimes. Uh, does that bring any sort of comfort to you at this point uh, regarding their commitment to actually solve all of these? Uh, you know, Sakina, not really. Uh, because since the NPA had made that commitment that he had set up these dedicated units, we went to the courts to ask the, uh, the NPA uh, to give us a deadline uh, when it will finish its investigation uh, into the Craddock Four murders and for the NDPP to give us a, um, a prosecutorial decision within 60 days after the court's uh, uh, decision. And can I tell you that the NPA has missed two court deadlines since. They uh, are the only ones that have decided to oppose our application uh, to the courts. F.W. de Klerk uh, has said that he won't be opposing our application. Uh, Flock, uh, Adrian Flock, said uh, he won't be opposing our application. Uh, Joffel van der Westeisen, uh, who was a brigadier that dictated the signal to permanently remove my father and his comrades uh, from society, it told our lawyers and the courts that they won't be opposing our application. The only people that are op opposing our application is the Ministry of Police, is the Hawks, the Ministry of Justice and the NPA, meaning that the state is opposing our application for them to give us dates on when they will finish their investigation and to give us a decision as to when they will prosecute. So, you know, this statement by the NPA that, oh, yeah, they, they've set up these units, it, as far as we're concerned, it was just a bunch of hogwash. Mm. And, of course, we also saw from the F.W. de Klerk Foundation um, as a little while ago where they were talking about the fact that deals were struck, Lucanio. And, and, of course, that piece of news in and of itself doesn't come as a surprise. But is there appetite to find out exactly what the deals were that were struck and whom with? Yes, there is very much appetite uh, for us to find out and to know who those people were that entered into those deals. Remember that, according to the clerk, members of the ANC got into illegal deals with, with, with former apartheid operatives, right? And those members of the ANC, in essence, by getting into those deals, they sold out the blood of our martyrs by getting into those deals with, uh, with the former apartheid operatives. And we want to know who they are so that they can be held responsible because whatever deals that they got into with the former apartheid operatives was not given, they weren't given permission by our family. I'm sure the Harun family and the Miko family and the Mpenge family and the Simelane family, uh, Mupetla Muhape's family, the Timol family, they did not consent to those agreements. So this is why we've then been, been pursuing and writing to the president, asking him for a commission of inquiry to, for, so that we can see why these matters of TRC-related cases have not been followed up, have not been investigated, and have not been prosecuted. So the appetite is huge, Sakina.
Mm. But the reality, though, uh, Lucano, is that the challenge we have at this point is that it's been so long and most of these people have since died or may die very soon. We saw in the case of uh, Ahmed Timol uh, with Rodriguez, uh, for example, died earlier this month. Uh, what's your reaction to that, you know, to Rodriguez's death and the fact that this seems to be the modus operandi at the moment, that you wait for as long as you possibly can and hopefully people will die and therefore you don't have to deal with it. That is indeed the NPA and the government's modus operandi, Sakina. It's very, very sad. You know, we talk about Jao Rodriguez. Two weeks before Jao Rodriguez died, a, a, a guy called Eric Winter, who was the instigator in Craddock, he was the head of the security branch, and the court had found that there was a case made against him for murder uh, of the Craddock Four, and that he was supposed to have been prosecuted. The NPA never did that. Uh, Eric Winter died about two weeks before Jao Rodriguez died. Now, I'm sure Kasim, when he gets an opportunity, will explain to you that Auntie, Auntie Halima, which was the wife of uh, Imam Haru, she waited 50 years, Sakina, 50 years, and still nothing happened. She waited 50 years for justice. Part of those years were under the apartheid government, and part of those years, about half of them were under the ANC government. Last year, at the beginning of, of September, Mrs. Nyamega Goniwe died waiting for justice. She had been waiting for 35 years. Now, I think what the NPA and what this ANC government wants to do is, is to allow all of these people to, to die. De Klerk is old. Adrian Flock is, is, is old. Um, uh, you know, and, and soon all of them will start kicking the bucket very soon, one after the other. And then what happens to us, right? When these people die, they die with the secrets. They die with the knowledge of what happened to our loved ones, and they take those to the grave. Then we sit with gaping wounds, unable to find any closure, stuck literally, emotionally, because we can't do anything else because we're praying, we, we, we're craving, we're craving closure. And the ANC and the NPA, they've got a responsibility to give that to us. It is their responsibility and we will continue to push for them to do their jobs. Mm. Um, Kasim, if you could just start us off by firstly, as succinctly as possible, just giving us the background to the um, Imam Harun story and then, of course, your concerns around what is currently happening, uh, the fact that information remains classified and people can't gain access to the details of what actually happened. Yes. So uh, this morning is a very significant moment um, in that... Uh, uh, it was the exact day that Imam Harun was buried after uh, he was killed in 1969. Imam was held in Dominicado for 123 days. Significantly, this morning is also the, de the date on which uh, Imam Harun's wife, Halima Harun, was uh, passed on in 2019. And this was also the day uh, we, we laid her to rest, again, with no answers. Now, one of the things that uh, concerns us is uh, the pace and the um, professionalism and the knowledge with which the NPA and particularly the investigators are pursuing these matters. Um, I've been following these matters very closely and, and one wonders um, how long these cases, which the NPA is so supposedly vigorously pursuing, how long will it take for it to um, reach one a conclusion in terms of the investigations and to whether it will have any meaningful effect by the time something is done. So let me let me give you an idea what I mean by this. Almost on every case, the investigators are wanting to go to the National Archives and find that the information there is classified. And we are asking as family members, you know, more than anybody else, let us have access to and understand why this information remains classified and what this classification of information means for the speed at which investigations are going to take place. And what we are saying, again, um, the, this point about uh, these alleged perpetrators and people who are not just alleged, people uh, um, 
Have there been clear cases that these uh, former security policemen are people that already should be prosecuted because the cases have already been established? Now, this uh, claim to um, uh, 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 what one could refer to, what was referred to as political interference into the NPA, I think that these are matters that prolongs the oppression that families have experienced. And it is sad and unfortunate that uh, our democratic government, the government for which our loved ones, for which our leaders were killed, um, uh, their families are being punished almost worse than what the apartheid government had done to them. The apartheid government uh, was responsible for the killing. The democratic government, uh, which can um, allay these uh, concerns and uh, reopen these cases, are clearly um, making things a lot worse. And so we are saying, and our demand is one, that the speed with which these investigations are taking place certainly must be ramped up. Two, that we are seriously concerned that the quality of the investigations needs to be thorough, that they need to uh, um, imp importantly address the issues of classification of information that will again speed up these issues. And we are also saying that the that 300 cases that was referred to by the NPA uh, demands a lot more investigators and a, a, a lot more attention as to how uh, these matters will come to fruition. But I want to emphasize the point made by uh, Lucanio early and by, uh, by the apartheid era victims families group that there is serious concern that these uh, one, foot soldiers, and two, these particularly these political decision makers are dying off. And one is almost concerned that there is some uh, sinister arrangement that we will extend these cases until we hear that person X, uh, like Mr. Rodriguez, is now in the hospital, will extend, extend, and just wait for him to die. And so this frustration uh, makes one very suspicious as to the way the, the state is handling these matters. And uh, this is a really, really disappointing for families. Mm. Kasim, also in response to the NPA statement, we saw AFRI Forum warning against what they call one-sided prosecutions and highlighting that the ANC and its alliance partners also committed crimes during the apartheid era. Now, um, your organization has responded to AFRI Forum's perspective. So uh, if you could just bring us in in terms of your view on that. Yeah, so to every forum, we'd like to say we listened very carefully to your video. And one of the arguments that you are putting forward is that this was a war that existed. Firstly, we do agree it was a war. It was the war of the apartheid government against the mass of the people. It was a one-sided war. It was a situation in which there can never, ever be any moral equivalence between what the apartheid government did and what the liberation organizations uh, uh, did in terms of liberating the people and really fighting for our survival. So this idea of that there being an equivalence is absolute hogwash. The second uh, um, important point that uh, they try and make is that there should be equality before the law. We ask again, who instituted equality before the law if it was not the democratic order? And more importantly, you are wanting to uh, close the book, as Kali Kirill say, on the past. Now, clearly we have said it earlier, that the Harun family, the Biko family, and all the other families, the Kalata family, everybody is saying that until we know what had actually happened, who in your decision-making structures and who in your security forces were directly responsible for the killing of our loved ones, there will be no book that will be closed. And we will make sure that we will pursue this matter uh, with you. Um, and so this uh, um, ludicrous argument that the... Uh, AFRI Forum is putting. But more importantly, and this is where we are talking about directly to the point of reconciliation, when one listens to the tone of AFRI Forum, and which says, if you don't listen to us, you can watch the video, it says, if you don't listen to us, then we will get Gerinel and his prosecutors. Now we are saying, you know what, Gerinel is a Mickey Mouse compared to the armed forces of the apartheid government, the mass of people had to face. They killed our parents. They killed our brothers and our sisters. Who is Gerinel and who is Afri Forum to make these threats? Because these are languages of threats that they are making. Apparently towards the NPA, which we say has a lot still to answer. 
And so we are taking serious issue with the position that Afri Forum is taking. Mm. And Lukanyo, you recently, you and your family resorted to take the government to court in order to force uh, the country's law enforcement agencies to finalize these matters. And uh, you've listed some respondents that have to deal with the matter. So what's since happened with regard to that process? Well, Sakima, uh, as, as I said, the NPA has missed two deadlines because they informed us that they were going to oppose our application to the court. So our lawyers then said, all right, well, then give us the record upon which you used uh, for the decision. Uh, you know, we want to know what got you to that point where you say that you are going to oppose. They missed that deadline, too. So the NPA has last week, Thursday, our lawyers had to file yet another application to compel them to release the record. So the NPA is trying to stall this thing and they're ducking and they're diving and, and they're just really frustrating the hell out of us. Because I can't understand why it is that the apartheid government would be the one that says, oh, sorry, the democratic ANC-led government would be the one that says, no, we are going to oppose an application by the families of the credit for that wants a, a date because that's all we're asking for. We just want a date as to when the NPA is going, is when the Hawks are going to finish their investigation and when the NPA uh, is going to give us a, 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 a decision on whether or not they will prosecute. We're just asking for a date. So why are they opposing our application when the clerk and the potential suspects in the credit for matter have said, whatever the court decides, we will abide by it. We won't oppose. Yet it is the it is the ANC government, the ANC government that is opposing our application. It tells you a lot about who these people are and what it is that, that they're doing and that they don't want their secrets to come to light. But we know, we know that the ANC is in cahoots with the apartheid uh, uh, operatives and they, get, they got into illegal deals and, and not to prosecute TRC-related cases. We don't know why yet. But we know that they're in those deals and soon we will find out because we don't care what threats they bring to us as a person. There is something bigger than us here and it is justice for my father. It is justice for Matthew Goniwe. It is justice for Stelum Fauli. It is justice for Stelum uh, uh, Svarum Konto. It is justice for Noctula Similane and Ahmed Timol and Steve Biko and, and everybody. It is justice for them and that's what we're fighting for. And we won't give up up until the ANC gives us that. Well, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there for today. But thank you so much for your time. Imam Harun Foundation uh, coordinator Kasim Khan and Lukanyo Talata, uh, the an author and, of course, the son of Fort Talata, one of uh, the Craddock IV uh, anti-apartheid activists from Craddock who were assassinated by the government in 1985. And the families uh, that are calling for justice following a new commitment by the NPA and the Hawks to actually dedicate units that will prosecute our apartheid crimes but to date oh, no, no. we're going to take a break 